in this we will introduce the concept of turbulence and fluidity. As the metal is flowing now from the gate into the mold cavity, okay, it starts creating disturbances in the mold cavity. So we start looking at that. We especially talk about different types of turbulences, bug turbulence, uh, surface turbulence and then some control parameters which we can track if you are interested to see what is going to happen, impact of that. And finally, the fluidity of metal because fluidity impacts my how far my how big casting I can make or how many uh, gates I need to put in the casting there. So here is a video of uh, how the metal fills and as you can see there is a lot of splashing and turbulence and you know happening actually in the mold and this remember this also simplified sim simulation always a approximation of real life remember that okay. So what happens is even worse than that. In fact, did we show the slow motion movie yet? We have actually just before we came, we have captured a slow motion of a water fill in a mold cavity and uh, we should be able to show you at some break and you will see the actual mold cavity in the lab when you visit tomorrow. Okay? And really what you have seen in slow motion is amazing. All right? So when in a real life, when you are talking about mold cavity filling, you have to worry about several additional, additional complications apart from those which we have talked about in the last lesson. One is that is it uh, the filling first of all start it goes down and then comes up from bottom to top in a gravity filling basically. But then as the metal is filling in the reverse pressure or back pressure of the metal in the mold keeps reducing your head. So head is no longer constant that is changing all the time. Second is the cross section area of the mold cavity also is changing all the time. So and that, that implies has implication on the velocity as well as the filling time. And then you may have some head section where, where, where metal fills first here then fills up that and then flows over that cross section and flows somewhere else. So there are real complications due to the geometry of the part apart from the material and process and all that. So let us look at something called turbulence here. If you see uh, I have drawn two things here. One is uh, we are looking at the, um, the red line is the metal flow and the blue lines are the resistance to flow. So where is the resistance coming from as the metal is flowing in the mold cavity? Essentially your mold wall itself friction all the of the mold wall, but inside the metal also you have viscosity. Viscosity is its own enemy to prevent the flow of metal in the mold cavity. Okay. Now we have two situations here. One situation where you have uh, let us say low velocities and the situation where you have high velocities. Okay. And I am trying to introduce the concept of what is turbulence really. Okay. We know turbulence means disturbance okay. that much we know. But how does it really come into picture in a metal flow is we are looking at here. So if you look at the flow in the in the left side and the streams are and are following a curved path here. If the viscosity is very high, it is like imagine it is like a uh, traffic jam on a six lane highway. Okay. Can you go anywhere else? There is a lot of traffic jam is there. You have to follow the lane only. You have no choice there. So viscosity is like my traffic jam lane. High viscosity is high traffic jam. So I cannot really move out of the lanes there. Okay. That is the left side here. On the right side what you see the disturbance is the, the, the resistance is less. There is no traffic jam at all. So I have completely clean let us say way. Clean road, straight road, no disturbance at all and I can go at extremely high velocities. And then as long as the road is straight I have no problem. The moment I have a curve what happens? And I cannot take the curve I shoot off. Okay. Right, because that I am not able to take the curve on that. So it is good to have disturbance and traffic jam if you do not want to have accidents. <laughs> right. okay. So what is happening here is you have curved path, you are going at high velocities, there is less resistance and so you can take off in all directions. That is what is happening to those fluid particles there and that is what is meaning of turbulence in this context. The disturbance comes only when you have less resistance to flow and then the paths are not straight. The paths have contractions, expansions and all those things. If it is a straight flow, you can flow for quite some time without any turbulence. Only when there is a the disturbances that you have, addition disturbance that you have that you get into a this turbulence problem. Now is it really worry, we should worry about it turbulence or not? There is a question here. So a simple calculation here. Supposing you have a cube of uh, 10 centimeter, so volume is 100 uh, centimeter cube. right? And let us say I, I 
reduce the area to let us say a thickness, a plate of one, one millimeter. Okay. <coughs> My surface area increases to about by about uh, 100 times, let us say. But if I break it up into droplets of let us say 0.1 millimeter size, my surface area is increasing by 1000 times. Increase surface, so turbulence what it does is it breaks up the surface into multiple droplets. And can, do you want to do that? Do you want to break up surface of the metal into multiple surfaces? So each surface gets oxidized, you do not want that. So that is a basic harmful effect of turbulence. That it increases surface area and air gets mixed into that and you have a lot of oxidation happening there. So your basic quality of melt itself is going into mold cavity is gone. You have no hope after that. This is one reason why in pressure die casting is very difficult to get good quality castings. In pressure die casting you are doing literally fine spray. Fine spray. Later on you are trying to apply pressure to get all of them together and all those things but fundamentally you are looking at very high velocities in pressure die casting. Fortunately wall thickness is small. So the velocity does not have too much distance to flow and fly. It is caught by the wall and then you are again back to mixing of the droplets. But droplet formulation and all that does happen and happen in your pressure die casting. So we come down to now this basic fundamentals now. So we talked about the your uh, flow is because of velocity and inertia and the resistance is because of viscosity. The balance between these two forces is what is called as Reynolds number. Okay. The ratio of inertia force by viscous force. Now if you remember the equation of Reynolds number, it is rho Vd by mu, where rho is density, V is velocity, D is the characteristic dimension of the channel which is, which is flowing, mu is your dynamic viscosity. Now the guess I want you to do is, what do you think is the Reynolds number typically in metal casting? If you take the same or 20 centimeter height and 2 meter per second. Before I talk about what is the value in metal casting, this is the effect of that. Okay. Typically if Reynolds number is less than 4000, we say it is, I mean below 2000 is laminar, but laminar you never see in metal casting. Below 4000 is less turbulence, 4000, 8000 is mild turbulence, okay. above 8000 is severe turbulence. So what do you think is the Reynolds number in metal casting? Anyone knows the value already? Okay, you can calculate that. You will be really shocked and surprised with the values of that. Okay. Maybe I will leave it to you as an exercise. But you will be surprised that values are extremely high even for aluminum or, or either for ferrous or non-ferrous, extremely high. <coughs> so high that you think is there any hope for us is so high actually, find actual value. <coughs> then a few other measures like surface turbulence where we look at inertia force by surface tension and so on. But what I am going to do is I am going to just put a number here and I am going to finally put a table of all the number values. The main thing that you want to calculate is the Reynolds number which you have just now done. Okay. Other numbers are there for your information and knowledge. So for example, there is something called Weber number where you are comparing surface tension and your inertia force. And if it is less than 1, it is great. If it is 1 to 10 which is common metal casting, you may have some little jetting and splashing and all that. But more than 100 is is really severe fountaining effect which again you do not want in metal casting. The next number is your uh, comparing beyond with surface tension okay. and this is a number called bond number. I, I mean there are too many numbers here and you may get confused here but if you look at bond number this is a measure between these two forces and again here less than 1 is good and more than 1 is, is going to be a problem. Again you start getting some kind of surface breaks up and then creates disturbances again oxidation and jetting and things like that. And the last number here is called Froude number which is inertia and gravitational force. And here what happens, even here also less than 1 is good, more than 1 is, if it is more than 1, even a partially filled runner as a picture which you see here can create a what is called as a air pocket being formed and that pocket is going to be pushed into the metal cavity which is again bad. That creates a blow hole or a gas porosity in that. Now let us just look at the values of that. Okay. So if you take our same. Uh, aluminum casting, let us take velocity of 0.5 meter per second only which is low okay. and channel size of 2 centimeters and then uh, rho and all that as, as per that. You see Reynolds number is about 18,000 even with a velocity of 0.5 meter per second and remember we talked about 
2 meter per second later on. So, it will be 4 times this much. So, 20, 30, 50, 60,000 Reynolds number is very common in metal casting, which means metal castings will highly turbulent uh, nature. Okay. Other numbers like Weber and all those things are not too bad, okay. but uh, these all indicate that um, these are on the borderline case. So, in general, by a lot of research people have found, and this is a number which you have to remember really is, in non-ferrous castings, about 0.5 meter per second is a limit. So, try to keep velocities below that. In ferrous castings, 1 meter per second is a limit. Try to keep it below that. Beyond half meter per second in aluminum and beyond 1 meter per second in ferrous castings, you start getting severe uncontrolled flow. You cannot do anything about it. So, erosion, you know, oxidation, aspiration, everything starts increasing at a dramatic rate after that. So, these are the two limits that you have to try and maintain that. Okay. These are clear? These are about turbulence part. So, few, few quick things to remember. Other things are like peripheral things which are good for your information. Now, we talk about fluidity. Now, fluidity is something which is, um, we say that ability of fluid to flow and then give the details of the metal casting and the farther it flows, we say the more fluid the metal is. And you know that grey iron is a beautifully fluid metal. I mean that is one reason why grey iron is very popular in castings. You can make nice grey grey iron grills and gates. You know, some of those old palaces have grey iron iron gates. How do you make those big gates like that? It flows very nicely. Okay. That is okay. But what does it depend on really? I just want you to tell me each one of these, is it going to increase or reduce? If pressure is increasing, it will flow for longer distance. Yes, okay, good. If a point temperature is high, viscosity becomes low, so it will go farther distance before it freezes off. Okay. If my metal is clean, it has a, let us say surface tension is, uh, is low, again it will farther, farther distance. If my mold absorbs more heat, metal mold versus sand mold or sand mold versus investment casting hot mold. Okay. If, if, my, if my mold absorbs heat, more heat, it will flow less distance. Okay. So, investment casting is great, that is because you are going to heat the shell and even a thin investment casting can be nicely done because the shell is hot and it does not absorb much heat. What about mold coating and friction? It helps to flow for longer distance. And what about venting? If you vent better, your back pressure air is coming down, air does not resist, resist, so it flows more distance. So, all these are basic tricks to improve your fluidity of the metal. Okay. And if not, usually in metal casting what happens if you control one parameter, something else goes wrong. So, it is always good to have a bunch of parameters, okay. so you know which is the least harmless, you control that parameter. Okay. Now, um, you can experimentally determine the fluidity value, that is one way or you can also use some empirical equations like this. So, the, this equation is for grey iron. So, you can plug the values of carbon equivalent, which is C, which is percentage carbon and the function of silicon and phosphorus and T p is your pouring temperature in Fahrenheit and you get the result in inches. So, you have put the values in the same units, then, then only you will get the results. Do not try to convert into millimeters and centigrade and all that. Okay. Keep the original equation as it is and you get the inches finally and you multiply by 25.4 to get it in millimeters. So, this works well for grey iron. You do not really have good equations for fluidity for other metals, at least in papers. But then we realize that okay, that fluidity spiral which you see as a thing, does it really represent the real life castings? Not really. Real castings you have streams separating and joining and things like that, cross sections changing and all that, flow in different directions, not in one direction only like a spiral. So, we try to create just for fun and just for interest, we said can we replicate a little more real life, but in a standardized fashion. So, we created a honeycomb structure okay. and so you, what you see in the top is the CAD model, on the bottom you see the mold and the bottom you also see the actual casting made out of honeycomb structure okay. and you can also simulate and see how the thing goes, but then we tried looking at the parameters. So, now look at these parameters carefully because in each one some parameter is changing. So, first one if you see the head is 150 millimeters, it is aluminum alloy, okay. point temperature is 600 and 
what do you mean a minimum fluidity, maximum fluidity? You have to actually measure the fluidity value from the sprue to the farthest point, but there will be two farthest points. If you see on the bottom side, it has frozen earlier, on the top side, it has frozen farther, gone a lot farther distance. So, you get minimum value, maximum value, let us look at the average value. So, average value is 100 millimeters. Then if you change the head from 150 to 350 millimeters, we find that average has now fluid has increased by 50 percent, gone to 150 average. Okay. The next one, we go back to the old head which is 150 only, but increase the pouring temperature and you see this has a much more effect on fluidity increasing to 340 from 100. So, immediate lesson is if you want to control fluidity, temperature is a more sensitive control than the head control. Right? Then we continue the experiment a little bit more, 250, 350 and 350 head and temperature if you see 700, 700, 750 and the last one if you see with the head of 350 and point temperature of 750, you are getting the maximum fluidity and the whole thing is complete. So, it is a beautiful way to look at the, the flow streams and real life fluidity of molten metals and this can be used as a nice test. Okay. So, this was done by Dr. Durgesh Joshi at Indore, SGS Indore and we are showing his results here. Now, you do have in literature some of the graphs we, and we have picked up some of the most important graphs in literature here. So, if you look at effect of temperature on fluidity, uh, bottom side you see the temperature value, on the top you see fluidity distance, this is for iron and steel. Okay. So, for grey iron if you see the fluidity is very high, okay, as high as more than 1 meter. Grey iron, especially grey iron with very high carbon, almost 4.5 carbon, has very high fluidity, but obviously low strength. right? And then if you see the steels have much lower fluidity than grey iron. Okay. So, it is of the order of if you look at uh, typically about between 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, 0 0.8 is hardly reach. So, the thumb value you want to know fluidity of iron 1 meter, steel you can take it as 0 0.6 meters because that decides your number of gates you want to put. Then composition, you see a beautiful graph here. For pure aluminum fluidity is good and it again comes down and again goes up and at some value, what value is that? Fluidity is maximum, it is close to eutectic, okay. about 14 or so, for little beyond eutectic. So, this is again a lesson that pure metals have a longer fluidity than alloys. Okay. And then what about thickness? As you increase the section thickness, it will flow a longer distance because it has less more heat to give up and it can go for longer distance. So, if you see here aluminum silicon alloys again, if it is 1.5 millimeter fluid is less than 200 millimeters, but if you increase the wall thickness to 6.0 millimeters, you are going all the way to almost 1 meter. So, here are the control parameters, so thickness, temperature, composition and you can get to metal to flow wherever you want. Okay. So, good to do it by knowledge and go instead of guessing all the time, you can now actually look at it. So, what we look here? We talked about turbulence first and why turbulence is bad, we do not want turbulence here. right? And uh, then we looked at the Reynolds number and various other numbers to look at turbulence in different ways, but out of all these things Reynolds number is the most important parameter there. And then we looked at fluidity which happens primarily because metal is flowing and solidifying at the same time okay? and diff different factors for fluidity affecting and also for us is the fluidity control. And then we also talked about the honeycomb test to look at the fluidity of in a real life, little more realistic measurement of fluidity there. Okay. 